Hello everyone, I'm just going to take you for a walk around the aeroplane. The legal requirement for any flight uh, of an aeroplane is to check the outside. And in commercial aviation, and in my day as a flight engineer, it would have been me that would have done, or somebody similar to me uh, on, on each flight would have gone around the outside. The pilots would go straight to the flight deck and start their checks. We would have arrived by car, and I would have probably got out at roughly in this position in relation to the aeroplane. And we would start uh, in a sort of clockwise position, starting with the undercarriage. Uh, and so I'll walk around and I'll just say things as we go around. If you'd like, come with me. So we head for the undercarriage to start with. Essentially, <laughs> we're just checking the condition of the tyres that we think they're inflated. If there's any, it's all been done by the ground engineers, but if we felt that uh, the, the tyres were a bit worn, we would consult with the ground engineer to confirm that it was within limits and so forth. We check them, they would check the pressures and we take that as done. We would check for any hy hydraulic leaks. Uh, the inside of the oleo leg is showing, all right, and the undercarriage pin removed, all right, ready for flight. Now, having done that, uh, while we were walking over here, we would have glanced up towards the cockpit, checking the fuselage for any dents or any marks that seem might, that they might be new, all right, and uh, also that any uh, holes on the aeroplanes, dents or anything like that, that should be uncovered are uncovered. The pitot tubes, have, the, the covers have been removed and also that the, the uh, uh, wiper blades up the top are on their stop, all right, and not, not below it. Okay. Then we head round the front of the aeroplane, checking the skin as we go. Again, checking that the uh, covers have been removed, that, uh, again, no damage, and that the windscreen wiper this side is sitting on its stop and not gone past it come down of course they'll probably be loading the aeroplane so the cargo doors will be open it'd be vehicles round which we've got to maneuver around but again we'll be checking the skin you'll notice there for example there's been some patch repairs to the aeroplane at some time in their life not unusual beneath the doors all right we've yeah, had contact with vehicles sometime in the past we carry on down towards the wing route Particularly check the static vent up there to make sure that none of that's covered or appears to be blocked or anything like that. It's only a cursory look which you would pick it up if, it was, uh, if there was a problem. We come down to the fairings for the wing group, just again checking for damage, making sure there's no bird's nest stuff here at the intake for the um, air units. And, uh, and then we start to walk out across the wing. Again checking for any damage. Uh, that may seem new that somebody's missed uh, that there's no liquid dripping anywhere other than on what's obviously might be rain or something out towards the engine right. and we're specifically looking at the leading edge as we come through because all that moves and we want to make sure that there's no damage there we get to the engine and again we're looking for damage and uh, we're looking at the intake end to make sure there's no damage uh, and uh, everything looks okay, there's no damage to the front of the intake. We walk around the back of the en engine, again looking at the engine powering for damage. Anything, hydraulic leaks up there, might sign any side of a hydraulic leak. And we look in the hot end of the engine. Okay, you can see the bypass through there, that there's nothing unusual in there. And we look at the hot end of the engine and make sure there's no evidence of any metal anywhere that shouldn't be there uh, and that it's rotating freely if there's wind and so forth. We take ourselves out, we carry on the leading edge. And I might say all this is done in less than 10 minutes normally. Again, we're, we're checking up on the leading edge. We do the same with number, number four engine. Intake. Uh, Cowlings, make sure nothing's damaged. Back of the engine, I, I want to emphasize that this is a series 400 jumbo and not the type of the 100 or 200 series that had flight engineers, or indeed the 300 series that carried a, a flight engineer, not that many of those were built. We carry on now right out to the wind tip. 
And again, we're just looking for damage uh, and everything looks normal. Okay, we come right out to the end. And here, of course, we have winglets that didn't exist on the four, on the 100, 200 series. And there used to be a big aerial, which was a high frequency aerial. Just again, making sure that that was intact and not damaged. Also, the nav lights are okay and haven't been hit at all. We now start down the back of the wing. We look at the stacks, the lightning uh, attenuators, the um, discharge items for the um, any lightning can strike. We look at the ailerons, the flaps. We have the ailerons there. We have uh, uh, they're, the, they're the sort of uh, uh, low-speed ailerons, all right. And there's uh, inboard, there's the high-speed aileron. Again, we walk down here to check in. That nothing's happened to the boat fairings, as we call. That's where all the mechanism is for the driving out the main flaps. High-speed aileron. The inboard flaps. That's the outboard flaps. And now we come to the other undercarriage. And again, like the nose wheel, we're checking for hydraulic leaks, condition of the tyre, um, that the OEO is um, extended or showing extended. Um, essentially, no, no hydraulic leaks from anywhere. You know, if we see fuel sitting, dripping, then we want to know why. Okay. Uh, general condition, uh, <laughs> come round to the um, Body gear steering, same again as I've just described now, but extra on these we have jacks because these are steerable in conjunction with the nose wheel to make this big aeroplane go around corners properly. Again we check, we have a quick look up here just to make sure there's nothing obviously that seems to be missed, that there's nothing dripping somewhere where it wouldn't drip on the floor, but a quick look rare. And then we start to walk down towards the back, all, all times checking the radio aerials to extend because these can very easily be written off by something. So we make sure that those are all in place. We're checking the skin of the aeroplane again. And again, the freight hold doors will probably be opened, all right. Um, but we keep an eye on things, what was going on. Again, we're looking for holes that should be holes and looking to make sure there's not holes where they shouldn't be. We get to the back of the aeroplane, there's the outflow valves. And we're down to four, door five right, the back of the aeroplane, back of the economy. And now we start to look up at the tailplane and the horizontal stabiliser, the all moving stabiliser with the elevators in the back and make sure that everything's intact. No damage again. Down to where the APU is. Again, checking that we can't, you know, we're just looking for damage that may have been missed somewhere, all right? We're looking up here, everything looks okay. Again, the static wicks, which is what I was trying to think, uh, say earlier, they're intact, we can fly with too missing but uh, it should be intact and then we start to come round on our way back repeating all that I've said before skin damage holes you know this side is doing the same as that side and remember this could be done in all sorts of weathers and uh, get very wet very cold covered in snow and of course the tail plane, the top of that tail plane is 64, give or take a few inches, 64 feet up on the top of that tail plane. Uh, and you've still got to shine a torch up there to make sure that it's not damaged at all. Door five, yeah, all the body is large in good condition, can't see anything that's you know, unusual or new about it. And now we repeat our checks on the uh, tyres on this side leaks and so forth make sure everything's okay here just a quick look up in the undercarriage bay and uh, then we progress to the we 
hand gear, as we call it. This is done it. That's the body gear. This is the wind gear. All right. And uh, again, leaks and so forth. And then we work our way out through the wing, all right, just as we did the other side. But I do emphasize that this filming is on a 400 series jumbo, so there are minor things that you might see which don't apply, like the winglets, for example, they didn't exist on the early jumbos. So I'm just showing you really what the pilots would have to do on this aeroplane, as there is no flight engineer. We now inspect number one engine, um, having done the wing tip, and make sure again what I've said about the engine that there's no damage to the hot end. We'll go around the front. No, nothing wrong with the intake side of it, the cold air side of it, and the general structure is free, particularly up the top there, where there's hydraulic equipment in there, um, and uh, there's no evidence of any leaks that have been missed. Right? A leading edge, very important, we're going to check that again. Make sure, by the way, I didn't mention it earlier, but we would make sure that all the cowlings were properly latched. Right. And remember, all this has been done by the ground engineers, but we're human beings, so somebody can miss something sometime. So, you know, it's, it's triple checking, if you like. Person who locked it, person who checked it, and now the, the people have got to fly it, so we don't want the cowlings coming off. And then we complete our walk down to number, th number two engine. Check on number two engine, again, like I've described before. And then finally, we've almost finished the inboard section of the wings, all right, again, and the body is a fuselage to make sure there's no obvious damage. And you'll notice again, we've got aerials extended out here, which could get damaged, so we have a look to make sure they're intact. And then finally, we're back where we started, and I would just send the steps and go up to the flight deck, whereupon I would start my safety checks in the cockpit followed by my own personal checks I have to carry out on the systems panel. Um, in the meantime, the pilots would have finished most of their checks, but I'm responsible for all the safety equipment um, in, in the flight deck, making sure the escape slides are properly in position um, and uh, that the uh, inertia reels are properly attached. Um, <laughs> and, <laughs> Nobody wants to jump out from about 35 feet and find their inertia reels not uh, attached to something. But there are other things I have to check before I start my actual uh, uh, systems checks. So that really covers an external check, I hope.